One of the things I'd like to do before we actually start showing you how you cut the different shapes is explain to you how you design and how you fabricate the molding you want to use on your projects. Now, the simplest molding we can make would be a molding for a flat frame. Typically, on flat frames, you have a piece of stock that's parallel, front to back. The outside edge is square to the two surfaces. And all you have to do is create a dado groove, the rabbit, for the picture to set into. And you route the edge along the inside with whatever choice you want of router bits. Now, that's pretty much a no-brainer, and there's no reason for me to explain that. Now, if you're working with more of a profile molding, in other words, this is a, a pre-finished stock. Uh, this is part of that stock I had that I made that little octagonal frame. You notice that the outside edge is square to the back, which in theory means we could cut it face up and flip it over and cut it face down. The danger is, is when we put that material on the, on the saw, it would be no problem cutting this way, but if we flip that stock over and can't pinch this in strong enough to keep that from kicking down, if the blade rotation yanks this down, there's a real good chance of kickback and injury. So what I would recommend on material like this, not just because it's pre-finished, but because of the profile, I'd recommend going from one side to the other on the saw blade to make the cuts. Now, one of the things that people seem to be most confused by at the shows is uh, it's not really difficult, but it's the way we make the material for a compound frame. Now, this has to be done differently because what happens is as the frame is assembled, the pieces are actually elevated. In other words, the face of the frame is not parallel to the wall behind the frame. There's actually a slope built into it. And what I'd like to do is take a moment or two and show you how you design your compound moldings. To show you how simple it is in getting ready to do a compound, I've got a couple pieces here that we're going to use to show you the technique of making the molding. I have another piece here that is about an inch and three-eighths thick. It's perfectly flat, and I made sure that both edges are square to the front and the back of the block. And we also have another piece of scrap over here that we're going to use for a special application. Now, I don't know how many of you here may or may not own the picture frame guy. This book is very, very similar uh, in approach to what we're doing in polygons. But this book deals strictly with rectangular frames. We've got 29 standard sizes for stretch canvas, canvas boards, and prints in here. And you can actually build your frames right to size, eight cuts, and never waste any materials. One of the things we have in that book, okay, is a sample of rise angle illustration. So what this does is it shows you how much slope you'd have in the frame face uh, when you rip your molding. In other words, uh, if you look down here, I'm going to use 25 degrees as my example. These are like two sides of a frame without the, the other side adjoining them in there so you can visualize the angle you want to bring the molding up to. That's, that's what we're going to use uh, to determine our rise angle. Again, for our purposes, we're going to do 25 degrees as the elevation in our frame. Now, the first thing I would do, and you can do this any way you want to, is I would take this piece of scrap, okay? You want to make sure it's two, two and a quarter inches wide. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that one end of it is perfectly square. And then I'm going to set up to 25 degrees and we're going to flip that material over, and I'm going to cut the other end at that angle. Now, the reason I did that is when I get done with this preparation of the stock, I want to make sure I get my blade square to the table saw, and all of us know you can't trust your blade tilt gauge. Okay? The other reason is we're going to use this as our sample to set our blade tilt. The first thing I'm going to do is pull my zero clearance insert out. And I'm going to put the factory insert in. I don't want to trash my zero clearance insert while I tilt the blade. 
Now, my delta, it's a little delta contractor I've had about 25 years, is a right tilt saw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece that we just cut at an angle, okay? And we're going to get underneath here, and we're going to crank the blade tilt. And what I want to do, I want to bring it in dead perfect, and just to confirm it, I'm going to flip that piece over and come to the other side. So what I know here is my blade tilt is exactly the angle that I, that I want it to be. Okay? Next thing we're going to do, we're going to lower the blade. Make sure at least we get that good cut. And then we're going to position our fence. Now what I want to do is I want to cut right to the edge of my material. I really don't want to waste anything in my width. Okay. I'm going to use a couple pieces as a push stick. And what we're going to do, we're going to rip the edge of this material. Then we're going to flip it and cut the other side parallel to it. We'll do that on both pieces. Now, what we want to do is we want to reverse the board, and you notice that I want to make sure that I've got this position perfectly parallel to the way it was on the first cut. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite edges. Okay. Now that we have those cut, here comes the sneaky part about doing compounds our way. I'm going to take my inch and three eighths thick board. I'm going to elevate my blade. And what we're going to do is we're going to position this where we're going to cut a wedge off the outside of this. Okay. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to reset my fence. Okay. And what we've created are a pair of wedges. that match exactly with the cut we made on our molding. Now, the advantage of doing this, and you got to admit, this wasn't a whole lot of work to do these. If the wedge is cut, let me back up one here. Since I know, okay, that these edges were initially square to the front and the back, okay, if this wedge is rotated 90 degrees, it represents the elevation behind the frame. So in other words, when we get all this done, 
if we set the molding on top of the wedge, what it's going to do is it's going to elevate the material to the angle it'll be at when the frame is assembled. And by doing this, we eliminate 99% of the headaches compared to the way most people do compounds. Now, what I've done is I've installed the router bit that I want to use in my router table. I've already got my fence set flush with the bearing. And I took one of the wedges we cut and I notched it out to clear the router bit. I don't know whether you can see this on camera. We've put double stick tape on the back of that wedge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press down on that. Okay. And the purpose of this wedge is to actually elevate the material to the angle it'll be at when the frames assemble. And by doing this, what this ensures is that the profile that we're going to have will be uh, square to the edge of the material. In other words, always your face goes down, inside edge toward the router. <laughs> I don't know whether you picked up on it, my sticky back tape didn't work very well. But anyway, what you can see is that the relief here on the material is going to be parallel to the inside edge. In other words, if you don't do this and put the material on a wedge, what's going to happen is your profile is not going to be uh, as pretty as you want it to be. Now that we've got the profile routed, the next step is going to be to take the saw blade off and install the dado. Now what we're going to do is you want to make sure you don't move the tilt. Okay? But all we're going to do is take the dado and install it at exactly the same tilt that we had when we beveled the edges along the side of the blade. And what's going to happen is, since we're cutting the top of the dado, in other words, the, the rabbit, the surface the picture sets against, is cut with the top of the blade at exactly the same angle that the edges of the material were cut along the side of the blade. That means that this molding is going to be absolutely foolproof. In other words, we don't need to worry. We could have eyeballed the blade tilt. And this technique works. Now, what I want to do... Now, you need to experiment a little with your blade height. And what's nice about this is since we already have the profile routed, okay, what we can do is, I'm going to come in and say about, how about there? Not really critical. And we're going to set the height. There you can see where I have the inside lip uh, basically the same size as the relief there. And I don't know why that basswood fuzzes up like it does, but right there you'll notice how now the surface the picture sets against, the top of the rabbit, is now square to the edge of the material. And what that means is when we set that molding on top of that wedge, Everything's elevated to the angle it'll be at when the frame's assembled. And by doing this and going from one side to the other, we don't have to do any of the garbage most woodworkers when they do compounds.